Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be embarking on an exploration of the series through the very tinted vision of alcohol. Well, more accurately, we'll be examining the characters in the series who choose to view the world through such a blurry drunken haze. Now, just a quick disclaimer here, this video is not intended to glorify alcoholism in any way, but at the same time, this is your source for everything One Piece. And through the course of the series, we've met quite a lot of permanent members of the Church of Inebriation. The criteria for this list is as follows. All characters featured must spend the majority of their time in the series intoxicated, preferably all of their time, I suppose, but even the most raging of alcoholics do have sober periods. Furthermore, all characters on this list must be canon because we do not invite filler characters to our drinking parties. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five acute alcoholics in One Piece. Number five. Hiozo. At the commencement of today's list, we have the greatest swordsman on Fishman Island, Hiozo, a blue ringed octopus fishman who carries a god of alcohol with him at all times. And that kind of dependence is really all we need to consider him an alcoholic. However, in this case, it turns out that indulging in the odd bit of brain poison actually has a positive effect rather than a detrimental one for Hiozo. Referred to as the drunken assassin, Hiozo quite literally becomes stronger, faster, and a more proficient swordsman depending on his state of inebriation, which is pretty crazy because Sober Hyozo was already quite powerful. Well, perhaps sober is the wrong word because he does constantly sip from his gourd of miscellaneous alcohol, possibly implying at least a permanent state of tipsiness. Sadly, Mr. Hyozo was unable to stop at abusing a mere one substance, and he also became highly dependent on using energy steroids provided to him by his dealer, Hody Jones. As a result, Hyozo was subject to rapid aging as well as imprisonment for, well, you know, attempting to destroy Fishman Island. Just a minor charge, really. But the latter consequence being something that will heavily hinder Hyozo's alcoholism going forward, but he certainly still deserves recognition for the dastardly drunk he was. Number four. Kokoro. Moving on to a more tragic story now, we have an ice fish mermaid who left her home to take up life amongst humanity, only to turn to the path of binge drinking, after her close friend and boss Tom was sentenced to death for crimes fabricated by some panda looking man. Not that one, he's cool. Yes, this one, the shit one. And Kokoro wasn't the only one either, as she had a drinking buddy in Iceberg, an apprentice of Tom, although he was a much more occasional drinker than Kokoro. As part of her now full-blown addiction, Kokoro will generally be seen with a bottle of something something in her hand, as well as a pair of rosy red cheeks, indicating inebriation. Unlike Kyozo, Kokoro receives no benefit from drinking, save for dulling the pain of her past. But I should also say that it doesn't exactly hinder her abilities either, as she was entirely capable of conducting the Rocket Man, as well as saving most of the Straw Hats from drowning during the Any Sloppy Arc. Thankfully these days, it seems that Kokoro's depression has simmered down. However, she still relies on alcohol in much the same way that a baby would rely on its mother's milk. Number three. Vasco Shot. Known to the world by the epithet of Heavy Drinker, Vasco Shot is a somewhat mysterious character in the current makeup of the series. However, the one thing we do know about him, and therefore what has come to define his character thus far, is that he is a perpetual drunkard. In fact, his surname Shot is entirely likely to be a reference to shots of alcohol. As with both of our previous contenders on this list, Vasco Shot carries an ever important vessel of alcohol on his person at all times. But unlike the other two this time around, we seem to actually know what he's drinking, as the kanji for sake appears on his gourd. And as with all addicts, Vasco Shot has a keen interest in keeping up a never ending supply of his chosen substance to abuse. Even going so far as to suggest to his Captain Blackbeard that they invade a town for the sole purpose of gathering more alcohol. Oh, and just a slight side note here has anybody ever noticed that Vasco Shot's nose is actually higher than his eyes on his face? That's. that's weird. In any case, I feel like a character who is defined only by his drinking addiction and weird nose placement is more than qualified to land the solid number three spot on this list. Number two. Kaido. Never fear anime only watchers, I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as I can, but at the very least we are all well aware that Kaido enjoys a drop of alcoholic indulgence once in a while. And by once in a while, I mean always. In fact, Kaido is probably the most accurate presentation of a real life drunkard on this list so far. Whilst intoxicated, Kaido goes through a whole range of emotions, from wallowing in despair at his inability to increase the number of gifters in his crew, to feeling extraordinarily angry and violent at the slightest hint of opposition. But he's also not above becoming a good goofy, smiley drunk either. And I guess the main thing about Kaido is, in order to make a creature that huge inebriated, you're going to need a hell of a lot of alcohol. So in terms of pure consumption, Kaido would almost certainly top this list, but alas, that is not the criteria. So what being in this world could possibly top 100 Beast Kaido? Number one, 
Sam. All right, Tempe, your disappointment, I can hear it from here. I know I built this up to be an amazing finish, but seriously, let me introduce you to Sam. This absurdly obscure man is an Easter egg character who appears in the series from time to time, always wildly intoxicated, of course, and holds the title of an ordinary everyday person. That's going to become very important in a second. But Sam first appeared in the series at the end of the Arlong arc and was seen celebrating with the wonderful citizens of Kokoyashi Village, which is cool and all, except he isn't from Kokoyashi Village. According to Oda, Sam was on his way home from his daughter's wedding, saw a party and decided to join in. He would then go on to appear in the Alabaster arc, to which Oda explained that he had a second daughter getting married, which saddened Sam, because it meant that she was leaving the family home, and in a drunken stupor, Sam somehow ended up in the Grand Line as a result. Yes, that is correct, an ordinary everyday person became inebriated and stumbled their way into the Grand Line, a place where an overwhelming amount of pirates die simply attempting access. And with that feat alone in mind, I don't think there is any doubt that Sam is the ultimate master of the drunken arts in the series. But that pretty much does it for the top five acute alcoholics in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line View Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, I've recently launched a Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favorite alcoholic in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.